Hey, today I am drawing a demon girl inspired from a reference photo I saw from the lovely The Ghost Siren on DeviantArt. Um, I'll have her account linked below just in case you want to check her out. She does some really cool uh, like fantasy gothic inspired stock images. Um, very, very helpful for this kind of thing. Always use references, friends. That's a free tip. <laughs> Makes your life so much easier. Um, but honestly, I'm pretty surprised it's taken me this long to even draw a fantasy character because it's one of my favourite genres for sure. Like, I mean, I'm probably one step away from cosmetically altering my ears so that they're pointy like an L. <laughs> completely joking because genetics has already done that for me. <laughs> Anywho, body insecurities aside, I sincerely hope that everyone is safe and well in this time of COVID-19. A lot of people have lost their jobs, businesses and even their loved ones and it's just really completely devastating so my heart goes out to all of you. Um, I'm currently still working as I'm in the healthcare industry so I've just been sanitising my hands to the point that I feel like Arnold Schwarzenegger in The Terminator. You know that scene where he tears off his hands to reveal the mechanics underneath? That's how I feel. Or anyone remember that Jimmy Fallon Star Wars parody from ages ago? Spring, 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 spring. <laughs> oh, I used to love that. Seriously, thought that was the funniest thing. Um, yeah, so I was actually not only inspired by the reference uh, photo I was talking about, but also I was listening to Morbid, a true crime podcast. Blah, blah. Morbid, a true crime podcast on the way home, um, which is really awesome, by the way. So go check them out. But they were discussing this really awful case set in the time of like the satanic panic in the 80s and early 90s, which was, if you don't know, it was a period of kind of mass hysteria surrounding um, conspiracies of satanic ritualistic abuse, um, really weird, awful things google it if you want to figure it out but um this whole kind of like conspiracy was largely perpetuated by evangelical christian groups uh yeah so it became a huge issue when law enforcement began to preference these wild accusations over legitimate police work even going as far to coerce an innocent teenage uh, kid into confessing to murder um well, this was for the case of the West Memphis Three, which is the case that sorry, I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, there's there's a few other satanic panic cases you can look up as well. It's really perplexing, honestly, the influence it had over people, um, especially in this case. It will make you so frustrated by how corrupt the judicial system was. Literally three innocent uh, teenage boys were put on trial and found guilty with completely fabricated evidence based on literally hearsay and coercion. It's, it's fucking ridiculous. Um, but really, really interesting. Highly, highly recommend going and listening to their stuff. It's free. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, I mean, there's books on it and stuff like that. But yeah. Anyway, so that was something that also inspired it. A bit ridiculous, I know, but hey, we don't ask where inspiration comes from sometimes. Um, but I wanted my demon girl to have like some cool symbology going on. Um, I just always like the look of that, I've seen it on a few other art pieces, so of course I turned to Pinterest, um, as factual as we know it to be, <laughs> and I have only now realized the one that I chose, which I chose because it was named for the Lord of the Ancients, and I thought that was like kind of cool and mysterious. It's called Barbiel. Now I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, Barbiel. Um, but nevertheless, I'm now plagued by images of Barbie in her bubblegum pink dream car driving straight to hell for some shopping and skinny orange oh, marker frappuccinos. frappuccinos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, classic. Anyway, that reminds me, I watched Good Omens the other day. Really good series for anyone struggling during, during isolation. Sorry, I feel like all I've been doing this whole video is suggesting things for you to watch and listen to. <laughs> I mean, I guess I should just rename these speed paint Gemma suggests things for 10 minutes straight with me, your host, Gemma. Woo! I know, cue some like corny TV show music, maybe some canned laughter. Perfection. 
But yeah, back to the drawing. Bit off topic there. Um, I'm currently working on like uh, getting better at coloring and lighting my pieces, like experimenting with color combinations, saturations, all that good stuff. I found that my pieces were kind of coming out a bit boring and flat, to be perfectly honest. I was like, ugh. Um, so yeah, little handy tip, safe bet when choosing colors for your art is to go with complementary colors like I did here. Um, the orange and blue, well I mean kind of more orange and peach because I like to live dangerously, um, generally looks really well together. It's kind of like a safe bet. So I'm sure most of you probably already heard of complementary colors, but very, very handy color theory there. <laughs> So I've also been experimenting with um, different ways of colouring, like alternative colouring methods, which you can see me using here. It's like a combination of gradients and lessoing sections of shadow and highlight and then softly painting in with an airbrush and then bringing in some texture with like different brushes and then picking out colours with my eyedropper tool and just kind of splish splashing that around the place. <laughs> That's a highly technical term by the way. Splish splashing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it took a really long time to do this. Like, longer than I was hoping. And I think it's just because I was really indecisive and um, couldn't pick colours. And I spent my time trying to draw her familiar as this strange bat mutant creature. Um, which was kind of, I think, meant to hang from her finger or... Oh, I can't remember. But I realised that... I can't draw bats and all my references were very unhelpful so I bailed hard on that idea and just decided to wing it. That was completely unintentional bat pun but still bat puns for the win. <laughs> oh no I'm showing my age there. No way in hell do kids still say for the win. Am I so out of touch? No it's the children who are wrong. Um, I knew I wanted her to have some kind of like smoky demon friend hanging around after my bat fail, but I really didn't know what it was going to look like, um, and I just literally decided to wing it. So you'll see me playing um, with like this watercolor brush where I just laid down this general shape, and I, I didn't know what it was going to be. I just hoped it was kind of going to come to me. Um, and luckily my uh, mushy mushy brain had some form of like weak synapse and an idea did come to me because it started to look a bit like a scorpion or like a stingray. I don't know. Really strange. Anyway, so that's kind of what I decided to go with and you'll see me playing around with some eyes and fangs because I was trying to make it a little bit creepy but ultimately I think it just looked a bit stupid. <laughs> And I can say that because it's my art. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it just ended up looking like it was squinting. It was meant to have four eyes, but really it just looks like it's um, <laughs> suspicious. <laughs> uh, which I mean, I guess it can be. It's a, it's a spooky, spooky demon after all. But yeah, I wish I had to spend more time on that. But at the end of the day, I was a little bit over it. I just wanted to be done. So... <laughs> But yeah, I mean, that's why I love drawing because, you know what, it doesn't have to make sense. Even better that it's a fantasy creature because it doesn't have to make sense. <laughs> Mortal concepts have no power here. <laughs> it's brilliant. I love drawing. It's fantastic. Um, wow. Okay. Enough nonsense for one night, I think. <laughs> Thank you uh, so much for watching guys and please subscribe because I'll be bringing out some more content in the future, more silliness to come. So let me know if there's something you'd like me to draw or something you'd like to be like to see or be discussed, you know, I'll do my diddly dandas to get it done. Peace out. Treat each other well. Bye.